Hey guys, it's James here, or crazy some of you more commonly know me, and today we've got 10 minutes of Operation Smash. This game is a nice little fun arcade platformer where basically you go around and smash stuff up. Um, lots of people have not heard about this game, I've, there are literally no other videos on YouTube about this game other than the normal trailery kind of stuff, and I figured I would give it a little bit of a look, see how it is. So anyway, here's the infographic, um, it's developed by one guy, again, it's another indie indie release, so there's no publisher for it. There are literally no other videos of this game on YouTube, so I'm really tempted to do a let's play of it. Let me know if you want one in the description once I've shown you some gameplay. It's an arcade platformer, it costs about £6, it is on sale at the moment with 20% off on Desura, I think that's how you pronounce it. I think it's like £4.80, This that's my local currency, in case you haven't quite guessed. And the fun fact is that there's well over a hundred different rooms within the game to explore and the entrances and exits are normally different too. Um, you'll see whenever I start to play the game but because of the entrances and exits being in different physical spaces it can kind of mindfuck you a little bit uh, where knowing where stuff is. Because normally with most platformers it's, it's you go from the left of the screen to the right of the screen and with this game it's go from some vertical space on the left of the screen to some vertical space on the right of the screen and you don't know where that is and it's just a game of trying to find it and go there. Anyway, so let's get into a little bit of the gameplay. Okay, so let's get into a little bit of the gameplay. Let's look at the options screen first. As you can see here, it's not extensive. There's music, sound effects, that's it. Um, it's an indie game, you can't assume that they would be able to put all that, it's Steve, I think his name is, I feel really bad if that's wrong, but Steve, if you're watching this, hi. Um, what was I saying? That he'd be able to put more time into this, but in all honesty, the, what I don't get about sliders is that you can kind of, you want both or neither, and you can kind of manually adjust that anyway, like you can literally manually adjust sound for yourself. Anyway, so let's go, let's go back, let's go into the about, uh, it's literally a game by Steve, oh, I can't pronounce that, why do you do this to me Steve? Steve Olufsen, ah, he's clearly not English, clearly. Night. No, I was gonna go and start talking to German, and Olufsen probably isn't German. It sounds more Swedish to me. Uh, anyway, let's go back again, just to watch you get into a little bit of the gameplay. Definite pro point about this game is there are multiple different um, loads, which is awesome for someone like me because that means I can have one game going whilst playing another one, and it still be wonderful and awesome and everything. I'm, I'm currently getting at my stopwatch because I have people complain that it's not 10 minutes long. And this is to prove that the actual gameplay is going to be about 10 minutes long. Yeah, start that. Okay, so let's start a new game. Loading screens are short. As you can see here, it's just a nice little indie game. And I'm trying to get all my buttons together. The, the buttons are a little bit weird. It's either arrow keys and V, X, C, or up, down, left, right, arrow keys, and comma, I think it is. But you can you can adjust those, so I wouldn't worry too much, though. Just let's look. Ta-da! Confused silence. I heard so I've shared to you about latest invention of time machine. I might just skip. I'm gonna skip through all the story because if you want to hear about story, then you can buy the game yourself. It's a really good story from what I've actually played so far. Let's go time travel. This is a time travel machine to clarify. Oh no, everyone has gone back in time. Anyway, so the first thing you have to do is find a weapon. As you can see here, it, there's lots of different worlds as such that you can actually play on. Eh, eh, eh. Uh, yeah. First thing you do is you find your hammer, which is shows you how to do your attacks, which is wonderful. Um, attacks are wonderful, and as, you, as, you could, as you're about to see, you can smash shit. Look, smash, 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 you're dead now. Smashy, smashy things. Uh, it's just a nice stress relieving game, in all honesty. It's like, you know how sometimes you haven't had that, oh, I totally I thought that was a platform. Stutter, stutter. Um, I totally... You know how sometimes you've had like a stressful day and you're just like, I just want to go home and break stuff. That's this game, basically. Uh, that's the idea. Anyway. Corner, cool, I can go that way. Woohoo! Wow! Uh, <laughs> you can bounce balls back with the actual hammer. Uh, the only thing that I don't... Uh, you slide around... <laughs> I literally, I'm starting sentences and then being like, I don't want to say anything about, it, about this game because it's a wonderful game. You slide around all over the place. Look, if you jump and then the controls feel a little bit dodgy on one hand. On the other hand, you can spam the hammer key, uh, which has got its pros and its cons. I'd rather play games which involve skill, like if there's a, del a delay on this. Um, 
rather than being able to go eh, 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 for just ever. Because I, I find that a little bit frustrating personally. Um, I like to play games with skill rather than with button spamming. Detective me, yeah, cool. We've just been over that. I've just killed both of them. Come on, come on, come on. There's a bit of gold there. So you get gold, which is like in-game currency, which I'm assuming you're going to use to... Um, that's going to annoy me. Just die. Uh, which you, I'm assuming there's a shop later on in the game which you can buy stuff with. If not, they're probably some kind of so oh, soul gel. Oh, gold artifact. Yeah, look, it's gold. I didn't... I played this a little bit before. I didn't even realize I was there. That's pretty awesome. Anyway, so um, no, I'm assuming there's going to be a shop a little bit later on where you're going to be able to buy stuff. There's a glitch, which I think it's a glitch, where you can basically... Um, it's time to try and time that really nicely. Um, where you can basically jump on top of these small spiky people's heads to avoid... And then swing the hammer to avoid taking damage, which I don't quite get. I'm not sure I can, if I completely agree with it. Look, like that. I feel like I should have taken damage there. In all honesty. Like, there should be some kind of reach up. In fairness, it is the tutorial level. I'm assuming they're not going to be around much later, but hey. It's nice to have that kind of door mechanism. It reminds me of um, Zelda as well. It feels a lot like a... Like if you were to turn Zelda from the 3D kind of weird scroller it is to the 2D side scroller. What is this? What does that do? Oh, this should get up there, even though I'm already here. Eh, yeah, never mind. Let's just go down this way. We'll do some... A key part of this game is exploration as well. And don't get me wrong. Love my exploration. I'm a big Minecraft fan. Well... I say I'm a big Minecraft fan. I haven't actually played the game in ages because it's possible to get bored of games and Minecraft is one of those games that I got bored of. But what was I saying? Why this has, this has nothing to do with Minecraft. This game is a lot about exploration. And as I said in the intro, there's over a hundred different rooms to explore. So it's all about finding the different rooms, in all honesty. As you can see here, save points. This is where, this is still tutorial levels. You're getting introduced to how save points work. Which, hey, I have nothing nothing wrong against that. I'd prefer if there's some kind of auto-save system in. But, what are you going to do, really? Go cool. more story. You can buy the game and read the story if you want. Um, just because I'm trying to show you as much gameplay as I can. Go on. Apparently, I'm at just the wrong angle. Bush, take that. God, I'm getting good at that. Scary. A little bit depressing, in fact. Bush. See, I like to say just say bush. Constantly, not bush as in bush, but bush as in bush over and over again because this game is wonderful. Eh, die. Cool. Oh, crap. There we go. I've done that. I did that the first time I was playing through. Normally, I play the games a little bit first just to give you guys, just to get an idea of what the game's like, what it's about, and so I kind of know what I'm doing going in. Fire again. Uh, timing is a really big factor in this game as well. You'll see a little bit later on. Hopefully, it will get up to a point with these. Oh crap! There's these uh, robot bros, and what they basically do is fire these. Um, how do I describe them? These little spherical power ball things. I don't know how to describe that. Don't ask me. Um, and it's it's pretty key to time when you're going to attack them. Even though you can kind of fire back either way. I did not know I could go up there. Let's try that again. I want to go up there. See, exploration. Exploration, exploration, exploration. Let's jump this way. And jump this way. And jump this way. Another thing is, is that the monsters automatically respawn, which is a little bit annoying. Like, the second they go off the screen, the spot where they were will respawn. I find that a little bit annoying. Oh, life quest increase. But, I mean, it, I don't know how games used to be, honestly. Like, I'm not that old. No offense to anyone who knows, like, Back in my day, 2D side scrollers said monsters would always respawn. Blah, blah, blah. But I don't think any of you guys will be old enough to know that either. So I don't know what that does. I think it's supposed to open that door, but that's the thing. I'm still kind of trying to get around the mechanisms in this game. I get that the little diamondy things open doors. Is that there again? Is that a glitch? Let's try and pick that up again. Oh no, I think it's a. Uh, I think it's a different one. Let's look. Let's see if I can go to help. I think what you have to do is do a really sly one. You kind of slide down the mountainside. I think that's what it's trying to get you to do. Oh, fuck. I fucked that up, didn't I? Come on. Come on. What I want to do is get the life capacity upgrade. As you can see here, the controls can get a bit frustrating, but I'm not good at platformers. So I'm more than willing to accept that it's my own personal faults. 
rather than anything else. See, if you jump here... No, you would not make that jump in any way, shape or form. But from here, let's see what you can do from here. No, not tall enough to make that jump. Okay, there's obviously some kind of upgrade later on. That's another thing. There's, there's upgrades out the hoo-ha that I know will be later on. Because there's so much shit that I'm like, I'm not going to be able to reach that. More story. Wonderful. Uh, by the game, as I've said. It's a wonderful game. Like, if I was to say, this is probably my most enjoyable 2D platformer so far. And I assume once I get later onto the game, I will enjoy it more. Because there'll be more upgrades and shit like this. See, timing again. Oh. Wonderful timing by James right there. See, just smashing shit. It's just enjoyable. Like, I don't... <laughs> there's no... There's down... Uh, okay, if I was to give this game a rating out of 10, from what I've played so far, I'd give it like a 7 out of 10. The reason for that is that shit like this is going to piss me off. Is it so nice? 2D side-scroller with a learning curve isn't too bad, I'm assuming. And it relies a lot on timing, and it's just nostalgic. Nostalgic. Have you seen the 8-bitness? Like, I haven't pointed it out, but I'm hoping you understand the fact that this thing is very 8-bit. It's just nice. It's just nice to break shit. Just over and over again, you know? Yeah. And then you get flying shit. Monsters seem fairly varied. Oh, that's just bad timing on my part, I guess. Monsters seem fairly varied. That's the robot bros I was talking about earlier. See him, he's now underwater. Push. That's one of the words you have to say whilst playing this game. If anyone ever does a let's play and they're like investigating and you see this let's play and you're up to this point, you gotta be, you gotta say bush. Over and over again. Just like, it's a lot. So, as you can see, there's lots of water, underwater elements as well. If you're thinking, if you buy the game and you're like, I'm not sure if I can jump under this wall or not, you can. Don't worry, you can. Like, I'm not... That's one thing that happened to me. I, I got up to this section. I was like, it doesn't seem like I can avoid jumping in the water. But I know if I do, there's a strong chance I'll die. But it, that's that's just what makes this game different to a lot of different games. Is that you can jump in the water. You know? Like, with a hammer. And apparently some kind of weird suit. Which I don't quite get. But, yeah. I think of all the games to not be able to swim in water, this is one of the least logical. What is that thing? I want that thing. I think it's more gold, but I need to know how to get there. These things are sons of bitches, honestly. They just jump all over the place and it's just annoying to kill them. But hey, it's varied monsters. Like, you have you seen another jumpy thing? Because I haven't. Have you seen another dude that looks who fires spheres and moves yet? Because I haven't. You know? This is, it's the small things that make an indie game an indie game. And a good indie game of that. And this game just is different. It's just out there, you know? Anyway, so I've already gone over 10 minutes, even though that's something that I tried. Specifically, I said at the beginning of the episode I was going to try not to do. Uh, this game is £4.80 at the moment on Dizzy. It's normally 6 quid, so make sure you take a look at it. Um, thanks for watching. And goodbye. I want to get that life thing. Bye.